It's not possible, it's possible by him. Praise God because He is good. Praise God because He is amazing God. He has never left you. He has never forsaken you. Throughout the week, He was standing beside you. No matter what, no matter what you forget reading Bible, no matter what you didn't uh, pray, but God was there throughout the day with you. He woke you up. He has shown every morning sun to you. Praise God because this may be a small things. 
but God is amazing and let's thank and praise God because God you are good Father Lord you're amazing God Lord we give you praise we give you glory Father Lord Lord we prepare our hearts to you Lord as we come before you to worship you as we come before you Lord with hearts open Lord Lord we come with the expectations that you move in this place you move in our life you move in this city Lord Lord we pray you you take control of us Lord Lord today we want to see your spirit moving in this place Lord let the fire which the which your disciples saw Lord we want that fire in our hearts today Lord we we pray that Lord you you change our hearts you change our minds Lord you do a new thing in our life father church can we just say can we just open our mouths and say that lord we want to see new thing we come with expectations it's nothing we come with expectations our hearts are heavy and lord we come with that expectations from your heart, from you lord lord you move in our life lord you move you do your new thing in this place you do new thing in my life you do move thing in my church you do move thing in my family you do new thing in this city lord father we pray your revival in this place father let your spirit be move lord oh glory we praise you lord oh glory 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 to your name oh Father God, we come before you, we pray, Lord, this worship, we give it to your, to your hand, Lord. We thank you and we glorify, Lord, and we pray this in most mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church. I'd like to welcome all of you to today's morning service. Uh, what a joy it is to be in the presence of God this morning, especially as we uh, celebrate and observe this week as uh, Mission Sunday, Mission Week. Uh, over the past couple of days, we've been praying, we've been fasting for all the churches, for uh, this nation, for all the leadership, uh, that we, uh, that this is a fresh move of the Holy Spirit uh, in our midst. Uh, I'd like to read a verse from the Bible, uh, Second Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek I, my face and, I, and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. This morning as we sing uh, this chorus, let's just take some time uh, to pray for uh, this nation, pray for the church. Let's pray that uh, there are a lot of people around us who do not know God, who, who have not come to the faith, who do not know about the gift of salvation. So let's just pray for them. Let's just uh, look unto God in prayer. Lift up your 
lift your voices and just pray church lift your voices and pray the greater things are yes and greater things are still to be done in this city Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord. Lord, we pray for this nation, pray for the people around us, Lord. We pray that you test their hearts, that you open their eyes to your gift of salvation, Lord. Lord, we pray that our lives be a testament to your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. Lord, we submit the service into your hands. Pray for everyone who's attending today. We pray for a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. in our midst this morning lord yes lord we come to you with open hearts and open minds to receive from you receive your word lord we once again submit everything into your hands in jesus name we pray amen And his praise, all the earth, all the heavens, 
for the living, for the glory of your name, the glory of your name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Stand by grace in your presence. 
the one who died and rose so god we pray to you humble ourselves again lord would you hear our cry lord would you hear our land that every eye will see that every heart will know the one who took our sin the one who died and says in Psalms 51 create in me a pure heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me let's ask for a fresh move of the Holy Spirit this morning mountains are still being moved strongholds are still being God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you, come and do what you do, we are here for you, come and do what 
Lord, we just depend on you, Lord, because, Lord, we are, Lord, we are nothing of our Lord Jesus. Lord, it's your strength that strengthens us, Lord, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. Burn like a fire, blow like the wind. Come, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. Burn like the fire, blow. doesn't matter, he's ready for a miracle, he's ready for healing in your life. As we sing one more time, let's sing with that faith and declaration.
ourselves into your hands Lord Jesus we pray for a fresh anointing of the holy spirit in our lives this morning Lord Jesus we pray that miracles happen we pray that the sick be healed Lord there is nothing impossible for you Lord we submit the rest of the service into your hands pray for the word and the communion Lord we pray that you speak to us and that you lead us Lord in Jesus name we pray amen we are going to go into the holy communion time now let's read john chapter 6 verse 27 john chapter 6 verse 27 this is taken from the new living translation but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the son of man can give you for god the father has given me the seal of his approval so when we read this uh, verse we can see the first part it says about what we are concerned about more in this world when we are living it says don't be so concerned about perishable things like food job or money or whatever it is yes we need it we need for our daily living life uh, we need money we need a job we need food everything we need it but it says you know don't be so concerned about it as we are going to partake in the holy communion you know the second uh, part of the verse it says you know spend your energy seeking the eternal life the son of man can give one of the main you know core important thing that god was um, uh, betrayed uh, betrayed and was beaten and he shed his blood on the cross for us he tasted death is you know to give us eternal life you know that's the main concern that we have to have this morning as we are going to partake in this holy communion you know we uh, as 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 a human being yes you know all these are worldly things worldly problems worldly uh, pressures that we face worldly stress that we face we go through so much of you know worldly things uh, which are right now you know uh, attaching us with our job or family or anything you know all this is worldly things it fades off in this world we are not going to take after our death you know we are not going to take that to eternity but what are we doing to live in eternity when we are living on this earth right now what is our concern what are we doing for eternity how is our life how is our life is sync with that eternity because god has suffered for us to take us to eternity to give us the eternity it's a beautiful beautiful thing beautiful feeling you know eternity when we think about it we have been saved might be 5 years 10 years or 20 years or 40 years we have been rooted in christ but this morning church as we are going to partake in this holy communion we have to think all this years that we walked with god what have we done for the eternity to be there and spend time with christ that's our main thing that we have to focus this morning as we as <coughs> this morning we have to know that many of us are in the secular world we work you know yes we 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 have pressures in work and things like that but when we go back in the bible and see there are men who worked in the secular world God kept Daniel as a man of God in the secular world. You know, he was synced, he was aligned to the eternity where he wants to go. He did not compromise on his spiritual life. He prayed three times. You know, even he he was not afraid. Even let the the, the thirsty, the hungry lion was there to swallow him and eat. But, you know, he's mind his frequency was fixed to eternity so that even the you know hungry lion could not touch him. This morning church let's all think a minute you know let's all close our eyes this minute you and god take time you and god for a minute and let's redirect our life let's rededicate our life this morning you know to live for eternity to think about <coughs> eternity to do things for eternity to give our energy our time our finances you know for eternity to spend on eternity this morning very silently i'm giving you a minute let's talk to god you and god talk to god lord 
from this day onwards, Lord, let my mind, Lord, let my frequency, Lord, let, me, let my mind sink towards eternity, Lord Jesus, as we are going to partake in this holy communion. Let's rededicate our life to the eternity mindset that God has for us. God has suffered. He was buried. He was beaten. He shed his blood. You know, he suffered for us because for this one thing, for this eternity. We are remembering this morning that we are, <coughs> that we are taking part in the bread and in the wine, remembering God's crucifixion, the bread that was broken for us, the blood that was shed for us this morning. That's main cause. The main core thing is for eternity. Let's do in our heart. Just take a minute. This is just you and God and ask God, Lord, Give me the vision. Give me a fresh, Lord Jesus, vision about, about eternity. How I have to tune my life towards it, God. Just take a minute. I request the quiet team to come up, please, as we are praying. We have a life, just a life to run for eternity. Let's give that life to run for the eternity and for the glory of God. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and asked God's blessing on it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take it, eat it, for this is my body. And then he took a cup of wine, drink from it, for this is my blood which seals the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Lord, this morning, Jesus, Lord, thank you for this wonderful time as we are going to partake in your holy communion, God. Lord, we pray that, Lord, from this day on forth, Jesus, Lord, let us run our life, Lord Jesus, our energy, our time, Lord, as a family, Lord, towards the eternity for the glory of God. Lord, bless us, Lord. In the rest of the service, Lord, we commit into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I hear the Savior say Thy strength indeed is small Child of weakness, watch and pray Find in me
Quickly, I want to say an announcement that this, um, today is uh, Mission Sunday, and next Sunday on 4th September will be a special Sunday. How it's going to be a special Sunday? Uh, because on next Sunday, on the first week of the September, the English City Church worship team will be ministering here with us. So it's going to be a special Sunday. So with all my heart, I want to tell you that please invite your friends your family members, your colleagues. So it's going to be a powerful time of worship and word, and uh, it's going to be an amazing time. So I want to encourage all of you to please invite your friends. Amen? Amen. So we'd like to request all of you to pray for Auntie Manjula, as Auntie is in a serious condition. Shall we all close our eyes and pray for dear Auntie? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. Dear God, we look to your mercy. We look to your grace, Lord. We look to the throne of grace, Father, from where we obtain the mercy and favor. Lord, we pray for dear auntie, God. We ask your divine favor or dear auntie's life, Father. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have led her thus far. And Lord, I believe that you're going to lead her further as well. I pray that you be with her, Lord. As she's going, to, as she's going through lots of pains, Father, I declare your healing over her life, Lord. Church, together we pray complete healing over dear auntie, Lord. Even though we see the doctors are not saying anything, Father, we pray the God of heaven has a last saying. He has a last word. And Lord, we declare your complete healing, your favor over dear auntie. We pray for brother Kishore and sister Pooja. We bless them in your name, Lord. And we ask your grace, your strength over both of them, Father. Be with them in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today's topic is... Thy kingdom come. So it's Mission Sunday. So we're going to hear some mission uh, uh, sermon. Okay, so Luke chapter 11, verse 1 onward, it says, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught, us, taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Why Jesus was emphasizing, saying that, Father, your kingdom come. Amen. It says further, and in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to uh, 10, it says, our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come. And it says, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in the whole Bible, the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of earth are like the same. It all belongs to God. So when it says Jesus, when he was, he came to this world and he started preaching about the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. And pe telling people that repent and reconcile back to God. Amen. So today, why it is important for us to, to have a prayer that God, your kingdom come. And what is my role in that saying, God, your kingdom come? Is it only I have to say a word of prayer saying, God, let your kingdom come? Morning, afternoon, and evening, and night before I sleep, I can say, God, let your kingdom come. And I can sleep nicely. <laughs> is that what God expecting me? When Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Jesus didn't say, this is what you should pray. Jesus was saying a pattern of prayer, saying, your kingdom come. Jesus was mentioning a line saying, your kingdom come. So today when we have word of prayer saying, God, let your kingdom come. What, is, what it does it has? What if I say God's kingdom come? If in, in India when we say this party should not come, the other party should come. So what does we mean? We mean we know what the other party will bring. Yeah? We know what all the benefits they will be bringing. We know how much the freedom they will be bring. Will, they will be bring. You know how much the choices, how much the comfort, how much the, the easy life which we will, we will be having if we desire some other party or some other kingdom cook to come. Amen. Israelites were praying, God, your kingdom come. Whenever they fall into the trap of uh, the enemy, they were going through that all the process and the Bible says, then they cried out and Lord heard and rescued them. In the book of Judges, in the Exodus, you see in every, in the pro book of prophets, minor prophets, major prophets, when you see, they were cried out and God rescued them. And they say, God, come us, come and save us. What they were praying. They were saying, God, let your kingdom come. We are tired of this kingdom. We are tired of Egyptian kingdom. We are tired of uh, Amalekites. We are tired of uh, Midianites. We are tired of Palestinians. We are, we are tired of all the uh, Palis, Palestines. We are tired of them, God. And we want your kingdom come. Means we were, they were looking for God's hand in their life. Amen. Today, if you want to have that prayer on Mission Sunday saying, God, your kingdom come. But John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his, his only one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, the kingdom of God. The life which God is expecting each one of us to have. Today morning as we expect God's kingdom to come. You know, kingdom of God. And we are also expecting kingdom of heaven. Yeah? Do we love the kingdom of earth? Somewhere we might get frustrated. Saying that why this thing is happening. God, where are you? Why are you living in my life? Where are you living in my life? Why are you living in my life? Why are you living in my life? Why are you living in my life? क्यों दुनिया में सब चीजें खराब हो रही है परमेश्वर आप हमारी तरफ से क्यों काम नहीं करते हैं और ये प्रार्थना करते हैं परमेश्वर तेरा राज्य आए अमेन सॉरी फॉर हिंदी व्हाट आई नीड टू स्पीक ग्रेट सो इन रोमन्स चैप्टर 5 वर्स 70 सेज फॉर इफ बिकॉज़ वन मैनस ट्रांसपास ट्रांसपास एडम्स डिसोबिडियंस डेथ आर रेन थ्रू दैट वन मैन much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Now here, the people of the world, of the earth, were living the kingdom of earth through Adam. Now here, through Jesus, we are living through the kingdom of heaven. We are living the kingdom of heaven. Now what's the difference between a life, a earthly living, or a life of heavenly living? When I say I'm living a heavenly living life, what does it mean? It means I'm living a life with God's presence. It also means that I'm living a life in God's kingdom. So when I say I'm living an earthly life, it means I'm living a life apart from God. I'm living a life on my ways, my values, and my morality. Amen? Let's see some differences. What does it mean, a life of earthly living, and what does it mean, a life of heavenly living? So when I say life of earthly living, in the life of earthly living, a man glorifies himself through his achievements. In life of heavenly living, man glorifies God through his achievements. In life of earthly living, he looks towards his own way of life and destiny. 
in life of heavenly living man looks towards god's way to find the way of life and his destiny and the purpose of his life in life of earthly living man builds his own kingdom through the fame money and growth and in the heavenly living when i say i'm living a life of heavenly living that means a man glorify god he builds god's kingdom through fame through money and through growth he says not i but christ in me galatians chapter 220 when i say the earthly living a man walks in a in the pleasure and the patterns of this world when i say the heavenly living here man walks in the realm of the spirit and are led by the spirit they evaluate things and situation through spiritual realm are we doing that when your boss comes and shouts on you when you get a call from your hr <laughs> how things changes are we still looking the things in the spiritual realm that something is going on in spirit realm when when there is a something wrong in your family when there is a fight is going on when anger is taking place when things are not working out are you taking it into spiritual realm or is saying hey it's happens amen in earthly living man thinks whatever he is doing is good and true because proverbs chapter 20 21 verse 2 it has the two portion okay so proverbs chapter 22 21 verse 2 it says we justify our action by our appearance so every man who is living a earthly living he will justify his action by outer appearance by the external things but the heavenly living person from the same proverbs chapter 21 verse 2 it says we justify our actions by our appearance but god examines our motives so even though in my earthly living i may say who oh, you know i just see how things are going on but in my spiritual realm in the heavenly living i examine my life how god is looking it how god's perspective about it in earthly living the life is the end of all and some believe it's a chakra keep on going jo hoga wo hota rahega but in heavenly living we believe earth opens a door for eternity this is not the end we go through the sorrows we go through the pain as we are living on this earth we have all this sinful nature we have everything what we have done with this earth and we go through that we face it but we have believed that god has a new earth a new heaven for us a new creation a new world for each one of us in earthly living they have battle with flesh blood war and violence but in heavenly living they have battle with spiritual forces and the powers of darkness so today when i say god thy kingdom come that means i'm believing that god has his own kingdom and i believe that he is expecting me to live a life according to his kingdom shall we go to the first point it says when i am in god's kingdom when i'm when i'm living a life of heavenly kingdom when i say god your kingdom come what i'm expecting to be in god's kingdom what i'm expecting from god's kingdom or what does god kingdom has so we're going to see three point which says you know what does god kingdom has what does you know how god king's kingdom functions how god's kingdom works so can we change the slide yeah, i got comments about the slide so it's a nice one <laughs> the flowers and all yeah it got stuck okay so next slide says the heaven lives with the with the proper system and purpose so when i say god let your kingdom come i'm expecting god's kingdom which works proper with proper system and purpose if i'm expecting god's kingdom to come in my life and work in my life that means i'm saying god your kingdom which has proper system and your kingdom which hold the purpose for my life let it come to me let it come on this earth because we humans when we create system by our own intellectual or by our own ways we messed up things but when i say god let you decide the system would you bring system as you want it when i set purpose for my life i may messed up when hr ask me what you where do you see your life after 5 years you know we have mugged up that answer some are very much 
an expert in saying that answer, you know. <laughs> I want to see my life, you know, well nourished, well fruitful, working in your company and doing better things, achieving height. We all have that proper question, proper answer for that question, which says, how do you see your life after five years? But when you talk to your personal thing, when you talk to yourself, where am I seeing my life after five years? You know what happens? The fear takes place. <laughs> Because we are not replacing our life with heavenly kingdom. By saying that God is holding the purpose for my life. I'm here on this earth, but I'm not living earthly life. I'm living a heavenly life. Where God works in my life. Where God, I mean God's kingdom. Where God is setting his system and his purpose for my life. Today, if I'm not properly concerned or I'm not having proper peace in my heart, saying that does God really have purpose for my life, I want to tell you, come back to heavenly life. Come back to the kingdom of God. Amen. When we say, Jesus is saying, go to the ends of the world and preach, baptize, and teach them what I taught you. This is what I was teaching when he came and started his ministry, what he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For the kingdom of God is near. What was the kingdom of God? You know, Jesus, when he opened the book, went to the synagogue after the, of, you know, for the fasting and uh, going through the wilderness, when he opened the scripture, he opened Isaiah chapter 61. What does it say? The spirit of God is upon me. And we see the ministry there. We see how God works with system where his proper plan was to restore us back not just emotionally, not just physically, not just mentally, but it also includes us spiritually, that God is bringing us back into his system, not my system, into his purpose, not my purpose. So when I pray, God, let thy kingdom come, I'm praying, let God, let thy system shall prevail over my life, over my family. Your purpose shall rule over my life. Amen. When I say, God, that thy kingdom come. I'm setting my creator over me. You know, sometimes we say we are the creator. Sometimes we believe that I'm creating my life. Yes, your choices, you are going to define, you're going to de you know, decide your ways because of your choices. How you're going to choose your life. But ultimately, your creator you have. Do you allow him to work over your life? When I allow God's system, when I allow creator to work over my life, he works in his way. In the Garden of Eden also, God was working in his way. He asked, you can work here. He asked them, you can eat the fruit of the tree of life also. But in God's system, he asked, don't do it. Don't eat the fruit of knowledge and evil. In God's system, that was the final uh, limit here. You don't have to do that. You do whatever you want to do, but not this one. So when, God, it, when we say, Lord, let thy kingdom come, it means we are allowing God's limitation to be in our life. We are allowing God's rules. We are allowing God's system. God's the way God works in our life. Where God says no, it means no. We use that God. You are so loving God. <laughs> yes, he is loving God, but he is also consuming fire. You see, he's also a jealous God. He's also your, bri your bridegroom. Amen. Second, when I say, God, let thy kingdom come, I'm praying about the heaven who works with the authority. When I say, God, let your authority shall come in this world. So when I'm living my life, I'm living in such a way, saying that, God, I'm under your authority. Amen. I'm under your God's kingship. Parmeshwar ke adhikar ke hum niche hai. You know, we know we are living on this earth and we know that we are under the human authority in, in company, even under the government. Uh, and we know how function works, yeah? We ought to follow the rules and regulation, how the, the earthly uh, our rulers whom God has appointed over us, how they, uh, you know, set the limits, set the rules. And we are ought to follow them. And we believe some rules are very nice, very good. And when it comes to against the God's kingdom, when certain rules are standing against the God's kingdom, we say no for that. I've seen that, you know, missionaries, those who are taking the Bibles into the different nations where it is completely prohibited. If you are caught, you will be 
maybe if sentenced to the death or maybe for life prison. They fill their Bible into the car seat and then take it. Why? Because for them, God's authority is above than all the authorities of this, of this earth. When there is authority of God which is crossing the authority of the world, I'm going to choose the authority of God. Because the God's authority is higher than any authority. It is God who set the authority of this world. It is God who set the rules, the kingdoms, the, the leaders of this world. It is the God who set all the leaders which we have in India on the position, on the designation. His plans rules over all. So when I'm saying, God, let your authority come, I'm showing my submission in God's authority, even though it let me to cross the authority of this world. When they ask me not to worship your God, I'm going to say no, because I'm under the authority which is above every authority. And when, they, when the worldly authority, when the, the submissive authority asks me to, you know, not to submit to the higher authority, I'm going to say no. If state government asks me not to obey the, the prime minister, I'm going to say no. Or president, no. That's a higher authority. Amen? Same, the authority of God, the, the authority, the kingship of God rules above this universe. Amen? It's going to be live, yeah, on YouTube? <laughs> The biggest difference between living the heavenly life and living the earthly life. You know, the one biggest difference is there. You know what is that? Independency. When we say that I'm independent from God's authority. I'm independent from God's rules and God's commands. That's why when I say I'm living the earthly life. When I say no, I'm dependent on God's authority. And God's life or God's the way God set for me, I'm in heavenly authority. When I say, God, let thy kingdom come, I'm showing, I'm, I'm telling to God, God, I'm dependent on you. I'm telling to God, God, I'm submissive to you. Whatever you say, that will be the final word for me. No doubt, no question. It will be final. Amen. What happens when I'm, I'm dependent. You know, Bible says in, uh, in Psalms chapter 100 verse 4, the three, very nice three metaphor it says, you know, the Bible says that know that God is your, your, the Lord is your God and it says he is your, the maker, he is, you are his people and you are pasture of his and the sheep of his pasture. Now when it says that Psalms 104, please read that verse, it says it gives the three metaphor. It says that we are creation and God is the creator. It says we are the people and God is the king. And it says we are sheep and God is the shepherd. So all this in three metaphor, it says the authority we have is God. So all this in three metaphor, when I choose to be independent, I'm in danger zone. When I choose to be independent from my king and run away from the kingdom, I'm in danger zone. When I say that God... I'm independent from your, uh, the way you set, you are creator, and I'm setting myself independent from you, I'm in danger zone. Because the Bible says, where will you hide yourself? Third thing, when I tell to my shepherd, I'm independent from you, and I don't want no more your guidance, no more your provision, no more your support, no more your road and stuff, I'm living my life the way I want. We are in danger zone. When we say, God, I'm independent from your authority, we are in danger zone. Amen? But when we depend upon the Lord, when we stay close to the Creator, when we stay and submissive to the authority of our King, when we stay and submissive to the, to the leadership, to the guidance of our Shepherd, I want to tell you that the safest place, you are in the strongest hand of this universe. Amen? Independent is really a challenging thing in our life. Along with this materialistic world, we have one more world, and that says the spiritual world. So when I say God's authority, or when I say thy kingdom come, when I say God's kingdom come, I'm also setting myself from materialistic world to the spiritual world. And you know what's happening in the spiritual world? Satan cannot fight against God. Satan is not that much powerful. He is created by God. 
he was lucifer and he's created by god he chose to be depend you know independent from god and then he fall we see that satan doesn't can't hurt god or can't fight against god so he has a great weapon very nice weapon very beautiful weapon you know what is that he has you he has me when i choose to be independent from god the bible says god loves us so much when he sees you as a weapon in the hands of satan god feel pain god feel hurt amen when we choose ourselves to be dependent to god we are a beloved one in the god's hand but when we choose to be independent from god we are a weapon in, in satan's hand are we clear with that i will say god so loved the world that he gave he took the action and when we are in god's hand you are the beloved you are not a weapon you are beloved of god he loved you so much but when you choose to be independent from god you are a weapon in satan's hand you got to watch out when i say thy kingdom come i'm setting god's authority god's rulership over my life i'm showing that god i dependent i am depend on you you see the life of job where he was going through the so much and god or satan was using him as a weapon to hurt to challenge god saying that this man will surely curse you you remove all these circles because satan already tried over job and he find out that god is keeping his circle over his life he's beloved of god and i want to tell you you all are beloved of god satan was keep on using and hurting job so that he can hurt god he was using job as a weapon saying that i am going to hurt god but he couldn't do that why because job even though he was going through so much pain and challenges he was dependent on god he was not showing his independence from god amen trouble will come challenge will come tough time will come let it show only one thing that you are submissive to one authority you are dependent to your god amen third comes when i say god let your kingdom come what i mean i mean i'm bringing the kingdom of heaven on this earth and what the kingdom of heaven does kingdom of heaven seek or you know cares for the hurt and for the lost when i'm saying let thy kingdom come god's kingdom cares and runs after the hurt and runs after the lost one bible says when one person repent and come to god heaven rejoices there is a party there is a celebration in heaven why because heaven is so much after the lost one and we have the call we have the responsibility that as heaven rejoice for you and me when we have turned back to god heaven still rejoices when we work in someone's life heaven still rejoices when we share the good news tell about god to someone when we show our our you know our our jesus through life through words and action heaven still rejoices amen when i say that let god let thy kingdom come i'm bringing god's kingdom to heal the broken heart i'm bringing god's kingdom to find the lost and i'm setting myself in that when i say god let your kingdom come on earth means on me as it is in in heaven i'm submitting myself to work in the broke life of broken people i'm submitting myself to find out the lost one and bring back to father the elder son of prodigal uh, you know elder brother of prodigal son didn't go after to find out the son but when the son came back you know what he was doing he was pointing out saying father how this son can be forgiven how my younger brother can be forgiven he should be punished and he should be thrown out again he went by his own choice send him again he should not come back are we again in the same position saying this person should not be forgiven my this colleague should not be forgiven god <laughs> my this neighbor should not be healed he should not be forgiven why because i am fed up like anything so if i pray god let thy kingdom come first i need to pray god forgive me help me to see the world as you are seeing god if you are seeing the world to heal the hurt and to find out the lost let me be in the channel work in my life where i can be used by you god do i care for the humanity 
Do I care for the moral issues? Do I care for the affair to take the stand? Do I care? Do I, am I afraid to tell the truth to people? You know what Jesus says in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3, and that shows that heaven cares for the hurt and lost. It says, and the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Father, it says, and it sent me to bind up the broken heart. Why, if only about the spirit thing, if it's only about the salvation, why God would care the broken heart? God cares for the broken heart. And hence, he sent Jesus. It says, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim the freedom to the captives, and release from the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. And says to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. Today I want to tell you, on this Mission Sunday, you are a channel. God has already anointed you to work in people's life. Through Jesus, you are already anointed. Through the Holy Spirit, you are already anointed to work in people's life. You have the Spirit of God who always guides you and comforts you. The choice is always your. Are you opening your heart to comfort someone? Are you opening your heart to guide someone? Are you opening your heart to share God's love with someone? If you say, God, let thy kingdom come, be ready to say, God, I'm ready to share your good news to that person. Be ready to say, God, I'm there to hear that person's emotions. Amen. When I say, God, let thy kingdom come, I'm serious about it. On the Mission Sunday, let this be a prayer that, Lord, make me that channel. Make me that vessel where you are working in my life continuously and through me you are working. Fourth thing I haven't mentioned there, but I want to tell you, the heaven is watching over you. The kingdom of God is watching over you. Even though you choose to be in the kingdom of God or live a heavenly life, or you choose to be, live an earthly life, the kingdom of God is watching over you. Amen. Now here are the two things, you know, Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses who is watching you, how you are behaving, how you are responding when the when situation comes, when opportunity comes, how you are taking a step for God, the heaven is watching you. And I want to tell you, the heavenly living does not leaves under lies. It leaves under the truth. If you say that I'm in the heavenly, I'm in the earthly living, I want to say you some, some differences which defines am I in the earthly living or am I in the heavenly living? You know, earthly living, choose the lies. It says you are not chosen. God has left you because you have sinned. You cannot be healed. You can do nothing. God has no more any business with you. And he has left you. He is carrying someone. He is working in someone's life. And no more, you know, you are no more in that, in that chapter. Where God is writing. But in heavenly living, I say what Bible says. Bible says you are chosen, you are loved, you are blessed, you are called, you are sanctified, you are justified, you are God's child, and God loves you so much. When I say I'm in heavenly living, I believe all these points. Saying that my God loves me so much. So I'm going to watch out my life. I'm, gonna, I'm not going, going to do the sin because I'm, I'm having a fear of God. But I'm not going to do sin because I love my God so much. I'm not going to hurt him. Amen. After this, what is my role in God's kingdom? Then I say, what is my part in God's kingdom? So I see heaven runs with a purpose and system. I see the heavens runs with authority. And I see that heavens cares for the lost and hurt. So when I see what is my role... Shall we go to the other slide? Okay, the first says, when I see my role, it says, I'm living a life with godly purpose. Defining that I'm chosen by God and I'm living a life with God's purpose and God's system. When I say, what is my role? My role is to live life with God's authority and with God's kingship, bringing heaven down 
through evangelism, and through healing the broken life. Jesus says, all the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciple. Amen. Third, when I say, what is my role in the kingdom of God? I'm saying, my role to live a life which cares for hurt and lost. I can be more worried about my hurt and not care or not bother about the someone's life. But I can be in other side saying that, let me keep my hurt aside. Brother, sister, let me hear you. How you are doing? Amen. Fourth thing, when I say I'm living, what's my role in God's kingdom? The fourth point I have added is like, I'm living a life with daily examine. Saying that, am I on right track? Is there something which is distracting me? Is there something which is bringing me, pulling me again to this earthly life? Or is this something which is not helping me to be comfortable in this heavenly life? Some thoughts are triggering me while I'm trying to live this heavenly life. Am I going through daily examine? Am I really watching over my life? That how am I doing daily basis? Amen. Salvation is a daily process. Sanctification is a daily process. But I'm again coming back to Jesus saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I need you today again. Amen. There are three metaphors I want to explain. I want to talk on it as, as we are all in God's kingdom. And in the missionary field, ministry field, can we go to the other slide? Okay, three metaphors. The first is the light and salt. The second is the recharge and credit. The fourth, the third is the vessel. And these are very common. You know, when I say, God, make me your channel, make me, uh, you know, a, a vessel or a soldier in your kingdom. First thing, what am I doing? I'm trying to be the light and salt in someone's life. When Jesus says, you are the light and salt of this world. World means for how many people? For how many long? Should I keep traveling? First, look to your neighbor, <laughs> whom God is bringing close to you. It may be your colleagues, your classmates, your friends. First, look to your neighbor and work in that person's life. Be the light and salt in that person's life. Amen. World may say many things, good things about you. But when you ask to your neighbor, they say, hey, what kind of fellow you are? <laughs> I think that's not going to make us light and salt. Second thing, the recharge and credit. And it's really important if you have heart for God, if you want to do ministry, I want to tell you, keep recharging yourself. If you're an introvert, <laughs> in your private space, keep recharging yourself with God's presence. If you have account balance, you know that you can debit until you have the credit something. If you have nothing to give to people, how are you going to give to them? If you are not filling yourself with God every day, how every day you can invest in people's life? How you can give yourself to heal someone? Amen? The process needs to be there. Why pastors, ministers, lay leaders, Christians, why we are not continuously being involved in ministry? Because we are forgetting to charge ourselves on a daily basis. One time we charge, okay, let me go and do ministry. After one week, two weeks, one month, two years, we get exhausted. And we say, now I'm done. But we got to take a break and charge again. Saying that, God, I'm again coming to you. Fill me again. Amen. You need God's presence every day. You need to fill yourself with God every day. With his power, with his anointing. Amen. Third thing, the vessel. You can't put the, you know, the, the dirty vessel. You can't put the new thing in dirty vessel, yeah? So you need to be clean your vessel. Every day you need to be clean so that God can pour out new, new things in you. So God can use you every day. You need to clean every day. When you wake up and say, God, I'm sorry for the sins of yesterday, which I've committed knowingly and unknowingly. Sanctify me. Help me to walk this day. Help me to walk closely to you. Help me to know you more. These are the common prayers. These are the common cries. Very easy cry, but powerful cry. It changes your day. If you're struggling with something, name it and say, God, I'm struggling with this thing. I want your help on this day. Amen. Devil has nothing to do with your plans of tomorrow, of tomorrow and day after tomorrow. He has to do with you today. So today your life should be proper with God. Amen. I need to see that am I right with today? Tomorrow you can plan, I'm going to do ministry, I'm going to do the conviction, conviction, 
or I'm going to heal many people, I'm going to pray for 100 people. What about today? How are you starting today? Devil won't bother your plans for the, you know, to tomorrow, day after tomorrow. It's bothering how we are today. Amen. Hence, every day, every day's walk with God is really important. When I say, God, let thy kingdom come, I'm also working in my life. Saying that, God, am I really becoming a light and salt? God, am I really charging myself? Is there really something which in, in me that you want to be, you, you want to use it? The talents and gifts you have given me, God, as, am I really investing it? Am I really multiplying it? Am I really using it, God? Or I have dig it somewhere, somewhere? Amen. Or God, am I really becoming the vessel which you want me to be? The porter where he molds? Am I really submissive to him on an everyday basis? It really matters. Amen. Shall we all close our eyes? I want to call worship team. And keyboard. Go ahead. Yes, when you pray, God, let thy kingdom come and your will be done on heaven as it is on earth. So when you ask God's will to be done on earth in your life as it is in heaven, we got to be submissive to him. We got to be dependent on our God. Because when we submit to him, when we let him to be to, to add us in his mission plan, we got to be dependent on him. I want to tell you, every one of us has ministry. Every one of us are involved in the mission field. But when we are not preparing ourselves, when we are not being ready, when we are not understanding how heaven works, how God's kingdom works, we miss the mark. Shall we all stand on our feet? Let this be a time where we are submitting ourselves to God. Let this be a time where we are molding ourselves and saying, God, we are here for you. Let thy will shall be done. Let this be a time where you are talking with God personally and saying, God, work in my life. I want your kingdom to be on this earth. I want your kingdom to be on my family. I want your kingdom to be on my house, in my house, God. And I want to be your kingdom. Yes, Lord, I pray that thy will shall prevail in my life, Lord. Aapki har ek mazi parameshwar hamari chun pe prabal hone pae, Prabhu Ji. Hum prathna karte parameshwar ki aapka rajya aaye parameshwar. Aur hume Prabhu Ji apne rajya ke har ek kaam mein Prabhu aap hume istamal kare. Pita hum apne aapko aatik aapke hathon mein swamte hain Prabhu Ji. Aur hum prathna karte hain ki aapki mazi hamari chun mein puriyo. Prabhu hum prathna karte hain ki aapka rajya aaye. Yes, Lord, we cry out to you and we say, God, let your kingdom come and use us, God, on daily basis, Lord. Not after one year, not after five years, not after ten years, but use us today as we depart from here. After the service as we have fellowship, use us to heal someone. Use us, God, every day, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Spirit of God, remind us that every day we need to clean ourselves. We need to sanctify ourselves. We need to recharge ourselves. And we need to fill ourselves with God's presence and anointing. Yes, Lord, we, we come to you, my God. And we pray that thy will shall be done, my Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Father, we submit to you. We submit to you, Lord. We pray, forgive us for all our ignorance. Forgive us for every time where we choose to be away from your presence when we choose to be independent from your presence, Lord. We ask your grace. We ask your favor, Almighty. And we pray, God, would you work again? Would you use us again, God? And we want to see greatly, Lord, you are using us. Greatly, we are being channeled. We are being involved. We are being used by you, God, to bring your kingdom on earth, Lord. We pray, Jesus, that your kingdom shall come in our heart, Lord. That your kingdom shall come in our heart, Father. That your purpose, your system shall rule over our life, Lord. That your authority shall rule over our life, Father. Every day step, Lord. Let it be under your authority, under your guidance, Lord. We remember that, God, we are chosen, we are loved, we are blessed, we are anointed, we are appointed, God. We are called by you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Master. 
Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We submit to you, Lord. We pray that thy will shall be done, my Lord. We pray that thy will shall be done. This time, Lord, we spare and we pray for your harvest. We pray, God, send more workers, God. We want to see more opportunity to do ministry in your harvest, God. We want to pray for all the workers who are working in your harvest. And we pray, God, work in their life, Lord. Transform them, recharge them, my Lord. When they feel down, when they are worried, when they are surrounded with lots of worries and anxiety of this world and the pressure in the, in the spiritual realm, God, we ask your strength to prevail over their life, Father. We pray and we submit their life. We pray for their wife. We pray for their children. We pray for their ministry. And we pray, Lord, that thy will shall be done in their life, Lord. We pray for every worker, Lord. Yes, Lord, we pray for Pastor Sam's career and Sister Faber. We pray for all the workers to whom you have appointed over us. And God, we believe that you have appointed over us so that you can help each one of us to equip for the ministry, Lord, to do your work, God, on this earth. We are your soldiers, God. Help us to be involved in the mission field, God. Lord, we pray for New Life Fellowship. We ask your complete guidance, new strategies, plans, and wisdom over the leaders. We ask your complete anointing and the move of spirit, Lord. We ask your complete the, the movement over this time, Lord. Father, we pray as the great revival has taken place in Ahuza Street, God. We want to pray that great revival has taken place in South, South India and all the parts of Karnataka, all the parts of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, India, and all this world, Father, we pray that your spirit shall move, God, and that each one of us shall be the channel where you are working in and through our life, Father. We worship you, Master. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Because you live, Lord, we can face every tomorrow. We can face every tomorrow, Lord. We thank you, Father. We submit ourselves to you. We submit all the job which you have given to us. We submit the blessing, the job which we have, Lord. We pray, God, that, Lord, use us in that company. Use us in that atmosphere. Use us among all those people whom you are bringing uh, to cross our path every day. God, we pray that thy kingdom shall come in their life. Let you be the God and ruler of their life, Lord. We pray, heal every the broken heart and every lost thing shall be restored back, Lord. We pray that our colleagues shall be saved, Lord. We pray, work in their life, God. And Lord, heal every broken heart, Jesus. We pray for every colleague which is hurting us, God. We believe that, Lord, you are bringing them into our life so that we can come close to you and ask salvation for their life, Lord. God, we pray for our every colleague. We pray for the team leader. We pray for the boss and HR. We pray for all our team leaders, Father. We pray that you be with them, Lord, and help us to share your good news to them. Help us to be the light and salt. We pray for all our different uh, workspace, God, and we ask your favor. We ask your strength, Holy Spirit, to guide us so that we can do ministry there, Lord. Father God, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for this time. And we submit our heart, our body, our spirit, our mind to you. We pray let it be in line with the heavenly living, Lord. We worship you, Master. We submit to you alone. We bless you, Lord coming week, God, we pray that it be guided and protected by you, Lord. All the ups and downs, Lord, we believe that you still, you will be the God on the throne. We believe that still, you will have the control over everything, Lord. Even though people may ponder to do wrong thing against us, to do evil against us, God, but Lord, we believe, we believe as Psalm 2 says, that the one who sits on the throne will laugh. The God who is taking control over everything, even though we see things are not in control. We believe, God, our lives are in control. God is holding the charge of our life. We submit to you, Lord. For all the matters, issues, tensions, our troubles, God, we submit to you because you care for us. We worship you, Master. We submit to you alone. And we pray. We submit to you, Father. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. And church, together we say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Oh, 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 oh,